Hello and welcome to the stories of Northern Life from the Sault Ste. Marie Museum. Today we are taking it back, way, way, way back, to talk about how this land we call home was formed and all the beautiful trees and minerals it provides. This is the first of a little series we will slowly put together, taking a deeper dive into the subjects displayed in our skylight gallery here at the Sioux Museum. This is a great recap for your elementary school studies on landforms in the Canadian Shield. So without further ado, Nicole, our collections assistant, is going to take it away from here. Landforms. The Canadian Shield. Sault Ste. Marie sits on the edge of the Canadian Shield, also called the Precambrian Shield, the Great Shield of Canada, or the Laurentian Plateau. This crust is known as the North American Craton. A craton is a stable portion of the continental crust. It extends from Greenland to northern Mexico. The shield is the exposed portion of the craton. The Canadian shield is 8 million square kilometers and makes up 50% of Canada's landmass. The Canadian shield is one of the largest continental shields. It is shaped like a horseshoe or an ancient warrior shield, hence the name the Canadian shield. It extends from Newfoundland and Labrador, through Quebec, down to Kingston and into New York, across to Gravenhurst, Perry Sound, around the Georgian Bay to Sault Ste. Marie, and up around Lake Superior. It extends into northwestern Michigan, northern Wisconsin, and Minnesota, to the southeastern corner of Manitoba, and cuts diagonally across to Saskatchewan, to the northeastern corner of Alberta, and into the Northwest Territories, Nunavut, and the Arctic Archipelagos. Formation It took three billion years for the Canadian Shield to be formed as a result of several forces. The tectonic process caused different parts of the earth to collide and form huge mountain ranges that used to cover the Canadian Shield. One such mountain range was known as the Grenville Mountain Range and was said to be as tall as the Himalayans. They were eroded mostly by glacial activity. They are now low hills and plains. Parts of the Canadian Shield date to the Precambrian Eon, which is the earliest part of Earth's history and makes up about 80% of the geological timeline. As the continents were moving around and colliding together, they formed Pangaea, the supercontinent, during the late Paleozoic and early Mesozoic eras. The supercontinent began to break up during the Jurassic period, finally forming the continental structure we know today during the early Cenozoic era. After all these continental shifts, the shield was not done forming. The next series of formations came in the way of erosion, namely glacial activity. Glacier activity. There have been five recorded ice ages over the 4.6 billion years of Earth's history. The Huronian, from 2.4 to 2.1 billion years ago. The Cryogenian, from 850 to 635 million years ago the Andean Saharan from 460 to 430 million years ago, the late Paleozoic from 360 to 260 million years ago, and the latest, the Quaternary Ice Age, about 2.6 million years ago to present. Humans emerged about 2.3 million years ago, that means that the entirety of human history has taken place during an ice age. During an ice age, the earth goes through cold, which are the glacial periods, and hot interglacial periods. 
When the Earth is not in an ice age, that means there is no ice on Earth, meaning there are no glaciers, even at the poles. The last glacial period, when the Laurentian ice sheet advanced across Canada and the northern United States, was between circa 95,000 and and 20,000 years ago. The ice sheet covered more than 13 million square kilometers. The thickness reached three kilometers or more. Between 11,700 and 9,000 years ago, the ice began to melt and recede. The Laurentide ice sheet was a massive ice sheet or continental glacier that covered most of Canada and the northern United States. Since it was formed, Earth has gone through several glacier and interglacial periods, meaning that the ice sheet has advanced and retreated over the land several times, toppling mountains and smoothing out the land. The Laurentide ice sheet spread out west from Hudson's Bay and east to Labrador. It not only smoothed down the topography, but polished and leveled rock surfaces, scattered debris irregularly, and disorganized the drainage system. The northeastern part of the Canadian Shield is tilted. In northern Labrador and Baffin Island, the land rises more than 1,500 meters above sea level. During these cool glacial periods, snow and ice would build up during the cold winter months, but the summer months did not provide enough heat for the ice to melt. Scientists have found that during the ice ages, temperatures would average about 7.8 degrees Celsius, with the polar regions being 14 degrees cooler. During the periods of deglaciation, when the earth would warm up and the ice would retreat, scientists have discovered that orbital changes of the earth caused higher sunlight levels to reach earth. They also found that there were higher levels of carbon dioxide, or CO2, in the atmosphere that caused higher temperatures, allowing the ice to melt. Glacial periods occur every 11,000 years, and ice ages occur every 100,000 years. We are once again in this period where there are higher sunlight levels reaching the earth and there are higher CO2 levels. However, this process is being worsened by pollution, which is causing even higher levels of CO2. This is causing increasing temperatures and melting glaciers. Landscape. 95% of Canada's landmass has been covered and shaped by these ancient ice sheets. The advancing and retreating of ice sheets flattened out the Grenville mountain range and removed the layers of soil covering the craton and exposing the Precambrian rocks underneath. The exposed portion is known as the Canadian Shield. It was during the last ice age that the ice sheet gouged out the Great Lakes. There is a thin layer of soil that covers the shield. This has been a barrier to settlement. Agriculture has been difficult on the shield, and farming is only possible in small basins and valleys. There are four types of forests on the Canadian shield. The boreal, the mixed forest, the boreal forest slash tundra, and the tundra. The boreal forest encircles the northern hemisphere below the Arctic. It is composed of forest and barren land regions. The boreal forest is composed mainly of softwood trees. These are the coniferous trees, more commonly known as evergreens and they're called coniferous because they have the cones. 
Most of the trees in this forest are relatively young compared to many that grow in the more temperate climates. Think of the old growth trees in British Columbia. The boreal forest is regularly affected by forest fires, insects, and other natural disturbances that help it to continually renew itself. These natural disturbances removed aged trees from the forest, exposed the land to sunlight again, and allowed the next group of trees to germinate and grow in a new forest, and released nutrients from the trees. When the trees are harvested by foresters, they must plant new trees or seeds to sustain the forest. For every tree that is cut down, they must plant two new trees. The mixed forest is composed of both coniferous and deciduous slash hardwood trees. The warmer weather allows the hardwood trees to grow. The mixed forest is sometimes further divided into the Great Lakes St. Lawrence forest region, the Acadian forest region, and the deciduous forest region. The Great Lakes St. Lawrence forest region makes up the portion of the mixed forest on the Canadian Shield. It is a mix of the coniferous boreal forest and the deciduous forest region to the south. The tundra is covered in snow for half the year. There is only a very short growing season. The tundra typically gets less than 25 centimeters of precipitation or rain, therefore it is considered a desert. Most of the tundra soil is permafrost, meaning it is permanently frozen. The southern regions of the tundra have a thin layer of topsoil that is not frozen during the summer months, allowing some plant life to grow. The region is largely treeless. It is instead covered by shrubs, grass, moss, sedges, and lichen. Much of the Canadian shield is covered in coniferous trees that makes the soil more acidic, making agriculture difficult at times. The soil is often coarser and well-drained. As the glaciers wore down the topography, the weaker rocks were eroded. This left many rivers and lakes across the shield, some of them quite large. Ontario and Quebec alone have over 12,000 lakes that are, that are larger than three kilometers squared. And there are countless small lakes. There are so many marshes and bogs on the Canadian Shield as well. These lakes tend to be acidic and highly and highly oligotrophic, meaning they are low in nutrients. Waterways. Waterways were the main source of travel as the area is covered in dense forest. These waterways are still used for transportation of goods from east to west and vice versa, just as the voyagers and fur traders of old used. The landscape of the Canadian Shield have inspired many artists throughout history, such as Paul Kane, William Armstrong, and the Group of Seven, just to name a few. The area may not be good for farming, however, it yields great resources, including mining, forestry, and hydroelectricity. Geology the Canadian Shield is made up of Precambrian rock. Radiometric or radioisotope dating indicates that it is made up of rocks that range from 1.8 to 4 billion years old. In northwestern Quebec, rocks date to 4.28 billion years. It is currently the oldest known rocks in the world. The fossils that are found here are mainly algae and ocean slash water dwellers. Metamorphic rocks are the main type of rock that is found on the Canadian Shield. Metamorphic comes 
from metamorphosis, meaning change, change of form, structure, or substance. This type of rock has gone through a lot of stress and pressure. As the glaciers were moving across the land, they were crushing the rocks and fusing them together. Large expanses of granite are found on the shield from this metamorphosis. Granitic rocks are normally composed of quartz, feldspar, and mica. They are the remains of the ancient mountains. The shield is made up of relatively flat expanses of metamorphic and associated igneous rocks. The region is composed of ancient crystalline rocks, any rock composed entirely of crystallized minerals without glassy matter. This attests to the long history of uplift, depression, mountain range formation, or, ero or orogeny, and erosion. This supports the view that Earth was a dynamic planet throughout most of its history. Shield rocks are very resistant and strong. Therefore, the weaker rocks were eroded and deposited, either deposited on the shield as the ice melted or were just pushed south below the shield. The shield is one of the most mineral rich areas in the world. Think of the Ring of Fire in Northern Ontario, that big mineral rich area that the government is talking about tapping into right now. That's just one of the examples of how rich in minerals the Canadian shield is. It hosts nickel, gold, silver, and copper. Some minerals found in northern Ontario include hematite, magnetite, jasper, and white quartz from Atikokoan. Some minerals found in northern Ontario include hematite, magnetite, jasper, and white quartz. Iron, gold, geothite, pyrite, and siderite from the Helen Mine north of Wawa. Amethyst, whose color is caused by iron inclusions, is the official mineral of Ontario. Thunder Bay has the most abundant source of amethyst in Ontario. Amethyst is found with pyrite, galena, sphalerite, shallow pyrite, barite, calcite, fluorite, and native silver. In northern Ontario, there is a clay belt and veins of gold. Banded iron formations occur abundantly around Lake Superior. They compose the main sources of iron in North America. Many of the towns in northern Ontario are either mining or logging towns. When Francis Hector Clark came to Sault Ste. Marie in 1894, he bought a nickel mine to support his steel plant. He used iron ore that was mined around Lake Superior. Some other geological samples in. Some geological samples that we have here at the museum are agate, amethyst, banded iron formations, clay, concretions, copper, epidot, chrysanthemum stone, fossils, glenna, gneiss, granite, mica, ore, porphyry, pudding stone, pyrite, quartz, quartzite, sandstone, shale, silver, and unikite. If you have made it this far, I want to thank you so much for listening to the stories of Northern Life today and coming back each and every week to learn more about the history of our North.